Misfit, the show where the backward compatible crew and their guests tell improvised stories through role playing games. Previously on River of Time. Why do I keep going back? Lynchpins, the Lincoln election, the launch of Sputnik, the moon colony, the internet. They'll send as many rolls as it takes to muddy the time pool. What can I do for you? I was hoping to meet with a man named James Wall. Beyond this door, everything is far in advance. Tech, we don't have enough information from out here. You and your band seem to have taken it upon yourselves to adjust things. Well, as you say, isn't that the point? Our point's not yours. River of Time, Episode 5, Delta of Time. Sims looks at you. You obviously aren't aware, and um, it's, it's pretty obvious. We can't time travel. So your little facade about coming back from the future? No. You see, we can't send people back through time. Alright then, what happened to us? I don't know, you're not... From here, just like I am and everyone else in this building? No. I was born in... What year was I been born in? Like, 85 or something? Something like that, yeah. yeah. I was born like two years ago. And I'll actually whip out my, um, my driver's license and show her. Uh, explain this. You step forward to where she is? I guess. Or you can just card throw. Yeah, I'll just toss her my, my whole wallet. Look at the dates on the bills. She crouches down, picks up the wallet, starts flipping through it. Now, I don't really care about your little organization here and what you're doing. I care about one thing and one thing alone. And that's the truth. So, spill. Uh, just a moment. She... Pulls out your ID, reaches over to your computer, and just types a couple of things in. Hits enter. And puts your ID back and closes it. Um, you. Go ahead and make a stealth check to get through this. Unless you just want to rush through it. Um, I don't even have stealth, so if I made a stealth check, it would be... You just roll? Yeah. yeah. Where am I entering, by the way? I guess that kind of determined... It looks similar to what he was in. So I'm, ar- I'm already in one of the future spaces? No, no. It's the, the more 80s style office building. So I feel right, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone in there? Like in no, terms of... it's empty. Okay. Well, in fact, you check a couple of offices and they're also empty. I don't really need to stealth if there's no one around. Maybe instead of trying to stealth, uh, maybe I can use my you know tactical sense, try to work my way through the building in a way that might encounter the least resistance. It's pretty obvious yeah. that all the places you'd want to get through are through a door that has a rather strange lock on it. Like, not strange to you, but strange for this time period. Okay. But I guess I have, I have really no way to get through that lock, though. It's, it's an electronic lock. Oh, it's an electronic lock? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't really help me. I don't think you I You have an electronic gun. <coughs> That's true. I could try to, like, yeah, I could try to shoot the lock, I guess, and see if I can overpower the electronics. Go for it. Fry them. I can just do that? Okay. I do it. All right. Uh, when you hit it, thing just disengages. Okay. The magnetic bolts restraining it, stop. There's no power applied. It's gone. So I can go through Right, it opens up. Groovy. You <laughs> step through into a very, very, very large research and development room. The same one he was in earlier. Mm-hmm. Banks of stuff. Two guards immediately turn on you. From either side? Yeah. Do they already have their guns up? They already have their guns leveled. Because they heard the noise. Let's see, I could automatically drop one of my grenades. Because they probably wouldn't be expecting that. Probably not. Let's see. Here's what I'm going to do. You tell me how this works. Okay. I'm going to activate one of the grenades and 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 drop it, and then it'll it'll affect me too. But I kind of I've already taken like a glance of the room, so I kind of know where generally where things are. And then I'm going to use it to take a tactical position while they're distracted. Okay. Tactical position for for taking them out. Okay. All right. 
For lack of a better description, this looks similar to like the engineering room on a on a, an episode of Star Trek. Okay. So, oh, so like double catwalks. layers. Yeah. So I could get up to that that area while they're distracted with you the could, yes. um, grenade. Is that a tactical move? Is that a or is that athletics that to get through there quickly? Or tactical or? tactical is an overcome would would work there. Yes. Okay. I will. Try, that's what I will try to do. Then. Okay. Roll it. Your obstacle on this one is going to be a six. Ugh. That's a bad roll. Let me go ahead and let's let's outline a couple of things about this. About this yeah, it's a new room. Yeah, so, let's do that first. There's an aspect uh, for general stuff. Security is tight. Lots of open space, but many cables. There's like electronics spread out all over this room. So the general spaces are open, but it's little hazardous terrain to be running around it. You drop this thing. Right. Goes off. Light is everywhere. It dazzles your own eyes. You stumble through the room, and when you've regained your senses, you've gotten away from them. Mm-hmm. They didn't manage to get a shot off at you. Um, but you're just tucked behind a desk, and there are a lot of people between you and that door. Very scared intern is working. <laughs> mostly, <laughs> mostly researchers. <laughs> a lot of researchers. Is there someone at the desk that I'm at? Um, there's one person, yes. And he's like immediately backing away, trying to trying to get out of the way of what he act, assumes will be guns. Act natural if you want to live. Don't say anything. Uh, 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 um, what? This he's is... he's up against the desk and still trying to scoot away. At this point, alarm klaxon goes off. More guards. Oh great. Yep. So you have alarms blaring at this point. Up where you guys are. Is there anything you want to do? Just checking. Wait for for. Dramatic. You can hear these alarms from outside. They are loud. You're doing a lot of, like, waiting. <laughs> it's like, hmm. I, I do the same thing. I just wanted to check and make sure. I'm going to wait. Yeah. Okay. Um, I assume we hear the alarms. Yes. What was your... Oh, she had entered your information. Yeah. And your last request was spill? Yes. Is this before or after the alarms? Oh, uh, just before. Okay. She waits a minute. You see text start to scroll up on one of the screens. You're a reporter from 20... Early, early 2000s, 20, 2015, something like that. Yeah. You followed Horrell through. Apparently we did. Are you aware that he's the only actual time traveler in existence before you? Uh, no. I'm not aware of anything until I woke up this morning and discovered that uh, all my credit cards are uh, no longer working. Listen, as far as I can tell, you guys are responsible for this. And thanks to you, I don't have a job, I don't have a paycheck, and as far as I know, I don't even have a girlfriend. So, you know what? I want some answers. All right, I'll give you some answers. The future, as you know it, see, it's in flux. There are better ones, there are worse ones, there are okay ones. It's taken us a long time, because the only thing that we can do is send information back. Until we found James Worrell, who somehow has the ability to travel through time. We've tried to do what he does. You can see the wall over there. None of those work. Every single one is a failed prototype. So we keep advancing our technology. We send Worrell back with new information. He grows up here, he gets a new degree, he gets a new job, he learns new things. He gets new information. And every time, every time, he goes back. Because there are only a few constants in the universe. One, that James Worrell will acquire a time machine. From where? We don't know. How? We don't know. Two, that James Worrell will have children. And three, that if he loses those children... He will do anything in his power to fix that, with whatever he knows and with whatever he has. You control him, you control the timeline. Amazon exists in the future because they figured this out. The Andes Project is just data logistics. We send them information, and they send us data back. About this time, warning alarms start going off. Ah, John! She laughs. I see your um, associates have decided to join you. He's, uh... Yeah, he's got unique qualities. <laughs> Maybe you can inform me about why he's so, uh... 
so focused on, on stopping us. As far as I can tell, his world was destroyed by war. Well, we're but trying to prevent war. world, by the way. War. His world. But maybe those are tied together. Maybe so. There have been a few, a few, uh, a few issues with the future. She reaches over and she hits a couple of buttons on her console. Taps some things in and hits enter. Flashing back to you. Okay. A um, set of armored troopers walking. You have seen these things before. They are not supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. They look clunkier than before, but they're essentially people in power armor. Okay. If you took the super sleek advanced ones from the future that you know of and made them with 80s tech, that's what you're seeing. So, it's an iMac made by Microsoft. Yeah. But I would know But I would know how I normally would take it. <coughs> You'd run. <laughs> you have a taser? So you've got roughly five of these things. Mm-hmm. And they are coming at you. They're not as fast as they will be. Mm-hmm. What, are they, what are they armed with? A rifle, similar in make to the one that you're holding, except it's a rifle, not a handgun. Uh, but this, but this place has a whole bunch of different like people and desks and cubicles and all that kind of stuff. So there's right. a lot of places for me to kind of um, maneuver around. It's not like a wide open space. So I'm essentially going to try to rush through, trying to spend as little time where they have a clean, a clear shot of me as possible to um, sort of you know bolting between like different cover points so that I can get to the elevator. All so, right, yeah, make an athletics thing. check. Ugh. I'm gonna have to reroll that. I will make an alternate ending. That's better. I, do I have to beat a five or get a five? A five at least. So I got a six. All right. And you're making for the elevator? Yeah. And I think I think at this point, the elevator door is open. I have her car key. Got it. Ha ha. I was hoping you'd say, so like, you're, you're, you're in the power down. armor. Yeah. You should have been in the power armor. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> the power armor can't fit in the elevator. We want to go true. up to the... Yeah, I guess that's no, true. He's not doing the NPC thing. No, no he's not. Yeah. So you rush. There's... Shots going everywhere. People are diving out of your way. You're ducking down behind every single countertop you can. You can. One of the computers explodes and showers you with harmless sparks. You're panicking because you're like, I'm going to hit the elevator. I'm not going to be able to get in. Then the doors slide open. And he's standing inside there with this goofy grin. Yeah. It's like, I got it's it. Like, I, I got it. I, base, I baseball slide into the elevator. Right. So I look cool. Unbelievably cool. Yeah. Slide the card. <laughs> elevator music. Great timing, Victor. Always. You guys are standing off to either side. Shots are going through. You get a pounding of metal on metal as these things race towards your position. But they're a little slower than they, they, they will be. Yep. We need to get out of here. Dealt with these things before. Elevator doors close. Start ascending. Sims looks at the two of you and says, It's not going to matter. I've sent a message to Andy. They'll let, us, they'll let us know that we need to have additional reinforcements. Um, they won't let me know. They'll let someone else know. Uh, so I'm certain they've already encountered more than we would have on staff today. While she's monologuing, I'm kind of like edging over toward the um, toward the devices, the prototypes that they have there, right. and just kind of observing some of them. Um, and actually, if it's okay with you, I'd like to introduce my Omega Axe back. Got it. I'm going to invent time travel. That is to say, I'm going to be the one who figures out Got what it. they're doing wrong. I'm going to take it to the patent office. So your Omega aspect is, I have to invent time travel. Mm-hmm. We'll do it that way. So, with that being said, I was wondering if I could make a notice and or temporal physics slash engineering role to um, see if I can sort of have an eureka moment with these devices. Yes, but you need to use basically the uh, invention. Where is Andy's? Or may- maybe maybe I should say when? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe 2300, maybe 2200. Maybe they've changed dating and it's... Fifteen. How do we know they have our best interests in mind? Do, do we even know they're human? Does it matter? <laughs> yeah. They I have mean, my interest in mind. They're, you, you say the, the, the future is in flux, but yet they seem to be a constant. Right. And as long as they are constant, we know we have a future. Well, then it's not the future that's in flux, it's the past. And we're their past. As long as Amazon is there. As long as Andes can feed the river. But what guarantee do any of us have that our own selves will exist? I exist. For now. They've already changed everything before me. Well. About this time the doors open and you two reach and see this. As I say, how do you explain John? 
explain this. <laughs> and I just open fire just directly. Open fire? At her. I'm okay. taking her out. I want this. I'm, I, I'm done playing games. I've seen my objective. I'm in the main room. We got to figure everything out. She's already, like, not useful. She's just an obstacle. This is sure. conflict. So This is conflict. Because she's not expecting it, rule system maintains that it's four dice flat. No skills added. For her. For her. Oh, for her. So you okay. roll your combat. I actually want to stop him. You can't. Uh, unless you step in front of it. Well, that's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shout, John, no, wait. And, um... I'm a pretty quick draw. I'm pretty quick. I, I want to roll, I, I roll provoke. Provoke. Yeah, pro- I'm going to provoke John. To what, shoot you? No, I, just... just you, you stupid fool! Why should you not kill... I don't understand why you don't want her dead. Because I'm talking with her. Ah, she's she's giving us answers. Okay, and the way this will work, you're going to roll your provoke score. Okay. And this is going to be used as her defense. Okay. I'm still going to roll this in case you fail that. Sure. <laughs> but it's not going to matter because I know his combat. Yeah. Five. Six. All right. John, you fool, don't... And then she... she that's that's that. Blast goes straight out of the gun, flies right past you, takes her square in the chest. Basically, the light from it lights up her face, and you see just this look of shock, as if she just doesn't understand this. And then all of her muscles collapse in on themselves. She kind of, like, her back arches, and she falls to the ground. Twitches for a few minutes. No, she should be dead, I'm assuming. There's electrical energy still going through. She's twitching, but she's, she's but down. What have you done, John? The time for talk is over. We have to stop Amazon. It's uh, gotta be now. I'm here, too. It's not just Amazon, John. It's Andy's. She was talking. We were figuring this out. We'll stop Andy, too. Forget him. I know somebody had to make a move. She was just going to call for more guards. It's time. It's time to stop Amazon in their tracks right now. The screen that she was standing over is blinking. We can get to the screen and turn it off. I, I, was, I, I want to read it before you, you stop us from... Well, someone else, they, they're closer. They can see what's on the screen. John, don't shoot anything else. <coughs> Cameron, what, what can you make of this? I'm here too. This man, Whirl, he's apparently the only one that they have successfully been able to get to travel through time. And they've been manipulating the past, their past, our past in order to make things the way they want them, so that Amazon will exist, so that Andes will exist. Those bastards. Well, this is apparently their command center, at least one of them, in this time. If if we can, if we have enough time, maybe we can send a message that can stop this thing. I think I might be able to do you one better. And so... Explain. At at this point, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm poking at one of the devices... So we want to check the screen? Seems like it's, something's flashing. You're, you're the man to check do the you, screen. Do you, bla- do you break through the... They're in a glass display case. Mm-hmm. Do you break through that? Um, John's a litter. He, John's, he's good John's at breaking smashing. things. I, yeah. I, I'll break Ooh, it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, um, do you do the honors? No problem. I you're, smash it. You're probably like trying to open it. Yeah, I'm like, 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 out of my way! Yeah, I just come <laughs> in with my, with my physique. The most recent one mm-hmm. is the one that you guys originally saw James Whirl holding beginning of the first episode. Okay. That's the most recent. So I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm kind of like poking at it, and it's like, I think I might have figured out how to get this thing to work. And if we can get this thing to work, and I can figure out how to program the dates, we might even be able to go to the source. The source? Andes. Oh. Andes? Then let's do it. Alright. Wait, I just had a thought. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised. No, but seriously, uh, James Worrell is the only, is the one that's feeding them information. If we can go back to James Worrell... Before he got the time machine, and destroy him, if you eliminate working. James Worrell, that that will prevent all of this from happening. I don't know if that's the only solution. Though. Haven't haven't you been paying attention, John? Every time somebody messes with these things, our brains get scrambled. I've got a headache that won't go away, and you you shouldn't even be here. It's an accept- It's an acceptable loss to prevent the future, the future that I come from. The future that I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, well, let's just pull vault right past your future and go to the source. Let's cut these guys off at the root. All right, let's try it your way. All right, so invention, trying to figure out how to make this thing work. All right. Is anyone going to look at the screen that's flashing for messages? I if, mean, if he's not going to do it, I would have. Okay. When you look at the screen, it says, please confirm the next linchpin 
uh, will trigger another Reich level event. <gasps> a... There are too many infractions. We've missed too many jumps to be able to change things fluidly. Please send confirmation and we will start the next linchpin. The next world is going to do something very, very bad. It's, well, it's a good thing we just shot the person who uh, could have responded. John, shoot that panel. I shoot the panel. This thing flares up. There is a very, very weird blue shifting distortion around what you just shot. Electrical arcs play over it, and then kind of just a wave billows out from it. Oh boy. And the thing just powers down. At the same time, things kind of like spin, similar to when uh, <coughs> Whirl went through the time device the first time. Everyone needs to make a tempo resistance check. So you're looking at a six. Ugh. Ugh. You don't understand. Time moves differently for me because I don't want to roll a negative three. Time is my bitch. I'm going to have to use my special skill. Puts me in a seven. Okay. I'd like to propose an Omega aspect. Okay. Destined to reveal the truth. I like it. I rolled a uh, six. Six, good. What'd you get? Uh, two. Two. Ooh. And you? Seven. Seven, seven for me as well. Interesting, interesting. This is hammering you pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Your background. At this point, this is getting maddening, the number of histories you're living through. Mm. Uh, everything that you see, it builds on itself. Sometime in the 90s, the Cold War ended when the Americans developed clean, renewable energy in the form of fusion in roughly 92. And then the clean war weaponry followed it, yeah. and the communist bloc fell, as did several other places, and it was a very, very, very long engagement. Technology advanced as rapidly, possibly more rapidly than it did in both World War I and World War II. So you need to take fusion of memories. You are still here. Mm-hmm. Your personal devices, much nicer. No, very nice. They're fusion powered. Is that for all of us? Yeah. The ones you brought back, if you brought any back from 2017 ish, mm-hmm. yes. Do they have those eternal batteries that never have to be recharged? Yep. So after he shoots the panel and it's like, guys, memories going crazy. Um, but now I figure that I might have some knowledge that might help me with this invention. All right. Pull yourself together. Uh, Slap. Trying. What's that? What are the benefits to this device? Um, time travel with reprogrammable dates. Okay. What's the flaw? Um, I would say the flaw is actually not reprogrammable. But I can basically code in one date at a time. Mm-hmm. So the flaw is that we have a limited number of dates we can use on this device. Otherwise, I'd have to make another device in order to do the thing. Which, right now, all I'm doing really is modifying. I'm not really creating a new device. So. All right. So that's basically it's got five uses. Mm-hmm. Just going to put the five temporal jumps in it. Mm-hmm. That should put it at about a six. Six, yeah. Six? Mm -hmm. Excellent. You're working with it. Mm -hmm. You have taken apart the most recent one, and you found the flaw in it. And it's not something that you can fix with tech from here, because it's a base data processing thing. Mm. There is a dimensional access that this is not capable of understanding. You do know Mm. that if you build it into your current, for all intents and purposes, tablet, Mm -hmm and convert your tablet into such a device, it will work using parts from all of these others. That's what I do. All right. You've built this thing. Mm. The numbers are scrolling. It looks very similar to the device you guys used to get here. You guys, I think I just invented time travel. That means this whole thing's your fault. (laughs) (laughs) End of story. (laughs) Then let's go stop Andy's. Prevent this whole mess from ever happening. Okay, I'm looking through the journal to see if there are any dates to tell me. Nope. He has very few references. In fact, all of his references to Amazon are roughly to talking about uh, a river corporation that's supposedly going to invest in the internet. Sims said she didn't know. She didn't know when or where Andy's was. Oh. That I made the right call. She served her purpose. Wow. You've never heard of this Andy's place? Have I? Have I? 
Yeah. You know it's part of Amazon. That's it. The original device, it had a locked-in date. A point of origin. 2013 was the date that James Worrell found the time machine. Right? That's what makes the most sense. It's the date that they can't change. Then we have to go there, and we have to stop him from getting the device. All right. So I'll program that date into the machine, and that's fixed. We can't if we change that. What are the results? Greg's program. Yeah, she also said that no one else could travel through time, and yet here we are. Good point. Let's go. We have no other leads. All right. So I, I punch the uh, punch the date into the device and tell everyone to gather close. <laughs> And really wish that I had uh, some sort of temporal resistance because my memories are probably going to get even worse. They punch in 2013. It's, wait, it wait. just occurred to me that by going there with this device, we're bringing him the device. You invent the time travel. You have to give him the yes, device. Yes, but you're, you're assuming that we don't shoot him in the head right after, so. <laughs> yes, I am assuming that, okay. actually. <laughs> Do you, do you say that, like, right after we hit the button? Oh, yeah. yeah. Should, should say that <laughs> As it's charging up, it's like, yeah, you know, I think we're bringing him the device that he got on this day. The world flips around you, yeah. and you hear, <laughs> thinking, just echoes, Sim saying, there are three things that are unchangeable. Oral gets a time machine. He always gets a time machine. He always has children. He always has children. And those children always die. And the children always die. 2013 hits. <laughs> oh, no. That's Actually, fine. it doesn't <laughs> quite. Like, you think you're about to hit, and then you realize there's nothing beneath you. Oh, boy. And then things kind of, like, shift and adjust, and you see layers moving, and when you, when it finally spits you out of the temporal vortex, you're standing on Earth, kind of similar to where you were before. There's no building. There is what looks like a building used to be there. Mm-hmm. And you can hear traffic. Up Are we, like, in a tree or something? No, no. It's just, like, it started to drop you off, uh-huh. and then shifted you. Down. Oh, smart enough to compensate. Uh, yeah. It would only have been the third, the third story too. We could have easily been okay from that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, it's just third story. All right, so I guess we're trying to find um, world. Let's give it well, a our devices are going to work again. Yep, your phones all work. So I have signal. <laughs> yeah, let's look. Let's look for world. Uh, I'll search for him all using right. my reportery contacts. Yeah. If anyone has contact and wants to help them out, I do. Of course. I do. I have contacts as well. I could help them out. So you will all add one. I assume who's got the highest contact? A uh, four. I've got a three. 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 Then it's you, and you'll add three to whatever you're doing. Okay. Um, you're actually looking for a six. Uh, plus two, so I'm at six. Don't need nice. you guys. You have a nine. You so have nine. So you are three actually. successes above, yeah. which means that you're succeeding with like amazing amounts of style. You yeah, are. Dude. You find him practically immediately. Because you know what you're looking for. You know you're looking for a fusion scientist. Okay. You know the guy's name, you know the city he lives in, and you know what kind of attention he would have been getting. And it leads you to a couple of friends who check a couple things for you. And another one who comes out and picks you guys up in the middle of nowhere. No questions asked? That would be my girlfriend. Yep. Yep. She comes and gets you and is like, why? Why do you do this? How did you even get out of here without a car? Who are these guys? Um, you know I drive a smart car. I can't fit this many people in. It's like I thought you were. I thought you were away this weekend. I thought you were in like um, South America or Mexico or something. I think of it as a staycation. And you were left before small house, three bedroom building, um, very calm, very serene mailbox out front. Is there mail? There is. There's a small, there's, there's like a, a manila envelope. Take it. Yeah, I go, I, I go to the mailbox. You guys do know that interfering with the federal mail system is a federal offense, right? John does not care. Felony <laughs> <he> committed. <laughs> I assume that's what we think it is? It's gotta be. Open it up. Your handwriting is on the package. Uh, of oh, course. <laughs> yeah. Apparently I sent this. Why did you send this? Well, let's open to it up. James. And, I don't know. My memories are completely muddled right now. I, have no idea why. <laughs> I take it from John and open it up and see what's inside. It is a, a device, almost identical to um, the one he's still holding. Is there a note? There's no note. I pound on the door. Uh, in just a second. Hold on. I stand behind the door so that he doesn't like see me through the people. He just sees town. Door opens. You see James Worrell standing there. I can. Can I help you, James? The name's Hutton. 
The future, I said. <laughs> <laughs> you clamp your hand over John. John? <laughs> James um, Worrell. You, you, yes. will des- you will destroy the time stream and create a future war. A war to end all wars. A war that is worse than a hundred 9-11s. What he's trying to say is he doesn't know how to explain <laughs> things to someone who's never... Yeah. Like, this is, um... James. He like looks back. This is a joke, right? No. There's cameras somewhere. We wish James. it. We wish it was a joke. You must not. You must not jump through time. We're here to prevent you from traveling through time. This is a joke. Like, like, really? This is. This is. I'm pretty sure this is a joke. Do you know where your children are, James? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, jeez! <laughs> Close the door. Call the cops. <laughs> Instant, like solid, solid expression. If you if you use the time, machine, if you try to jump through time, it will impact your children's lives. You must stop. Don't touch the time machine. John, James. stop John. talking, please. Am I being threatened? Is that what's? Going no, on? you're not. Just John's an idiot. Do you want to try to explain this? I can. No, no, not you. Rain. Not you. You. Okay, okay. Close the door, let's try this again. No, don't, don't close the door. I'm not letting him close the door. I want to call empathy. <laughs> because one of With them is James. Okay. And I want to say the right thing. Better question. What is your goal? My goal is to make him believe us, understand, and join us. Got it. Um, hold on, I got this. Your, your obstacle, by the way, um, on this, because of him, you're welcome, it's probably going to be about a six. He should get That's five. Eight point for, for... Yes, yes, he should. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Those come out of the... Uh, oh, for like, what? Sticking to my concept or something? Yeah. Just being insane, crazy man from the future. <laughs> Don't encourage him. <laughs> anyway, I, I got a it. seven. So you clear it with... It's good. Barely, um, but yes. But you clear it without any consequences. Oh, good. Yeah. The future... Right, right. And um, my son over in, in the Middle East is not... A friend here doesn't have anything weird going on with that. Listen, I can tell you're a family man. You, you care deeply about your son. John here, he, he never had a family life. He never had a father who loved him. It's going to sound crazy, and, and I know it's insane, but Cameron, and I kind of point to here, doc, Dr. Cameron here, he invented a time machine. I'm technically not a doctor. Oh, but proceed. Well, why not? I was thinking Master of Science or something like that. That works too. Yeah. <laughs> I have a master's degree yeah. <laughs> in science. In science! <laughs> Exclamation point. Master Cameron here. I like that. Invented a time machine. Um. My name's Hutton. I'm a reporter. We all got sucked into this thing, and you're about to get sucked into it, too. In fact... Hutton, the, the guy from the Chicago murder, murders like a year ago? Yeah, that's me. Hmm. And, uh, pull out my, my phone. Believe it or not, I'm not from this time. I'm from about five years from now. And, um, I'll pull it up and, and, and show him. It's... It's been a really weird day, but you, you're a time traveler, and you've already been back I don't know how many times, and I'll indicate the, uh, the journal. I'll hand it to him, actually, so you can see it's his handwriting. You're... Did you take pictures of all the crazy court board stuff? Oh, yeah, so... I'll hand him the journal and start just, like, sort of presentation style, like, holding it up next to my head and sort of, like, swiping with yeah. my finger. You're a pawn, just like us. There's an organization from the future. It, it's called Andes. It's manipulating us all. And it's trying very, very hard to make sure that there is a uh, military organization in place, in force, throughout, it appears, most of modern history. They're called Amazon. Any of this sound familiar to you at all? Amazon. There was, um, no, I can't, uh, my, my college degree, there was, uh, I got, at the last second, I was given a scholarship by a similar, similar company. 
never heard of them before. I couldn't find anything out afterwards. They disappeared. Wait, you're, you're saying you got a grant from Amazon for your education? Right. To become what? a fusion scientist. What is your degree? Um, fusion mechanics, uh, quantum mechanics. Well, I'm a theoretical physicist with real world applications. I hate to break it to you, but um, you've been used. And not only that, but why me? Every iteration of you. As far as I know, as far as we've been able to discover, it's because there's something about you that makes time travel possible. There are three constants. There is a man named John Worrell, or James Worrell, who receives a time travel device. This time travel device. And this one. And Worrell's children die. And he He does... They die, and he will do anything in his power to change the past. But in doing so, you ruin the future. For all children, not just your own. Sometimes it's a daughter. Sometimes it's sons. And apparently, this time, it is your son. One time it was on the moon. On the moon? Yeah, don't ask. Why tell me this? I, I don't have a time machine. My, my, my sons are alive still. This was in your mailbox. Today is the day you get the time machine. This is the first constant. What would you have me do then? I just, I... Help us. You More stop. to the point, stop the cycle. Whatever you do, you cannot be a pawn for Amazon anymore. Thousands of worlds have been pawns. You don't have to be. You, you're responsible for the death of millions in shut future up, stop it, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. No, it's true. That should, that should convince him, right? You're just, I mean, come on, seriously. You are holding the only method he has to get away, to use that thing. You are holding both copies of the time machine. Why do we have to, when the first time we used it, it didn't come with us? Why did it come with us this time? He made it. He this made is it. the most recent He made it. Mm. Okay. So presumably... The other one, the one that was in his mailbox, if it was used, it would stay. You don't know, it looks identical to his. As far as you can tell, and looking at it, uh, there are two dates on it. And what are the dates? The current one. Mm -hmm. And then the current one a week prior. So I think what I might try to do is rig these things so they can't be reprogrammed, (coughs) and then essentially use one to send them both back a week, and, and a week or whatever. So that both of them are kind of like stuck in that time and they can't be changed. If you sent this, we have to figure out why. Yeah. Why did you why did you send it? Are you working for Amazon? I don't know. <laughs> what what if we just destroy the time machines? That would prevent it from Come with anything us, James. from happening. What? Why? Where So can I do just like quick like math in my head to like sort of estimate the approximate temporal ramifications of destroying these things? You also have to do something that is... You have to also explain to me why we shouldn't just destroy these. Yeah, and that's why I'm doing the... Like, straight up. The math in my head. Honestly, because there's a simpler answer. Mm. And it's, if you take the one that you have, Mm. go back in time and mail it to him, you've already picked it up. No. And then you have the one you've already picked up. So there's only one left. You're the only one with it. Smash them both. Yeah, if we we destroy them. You see the Delphius device outlining possible ramifications. Basically going through it like chess moves, trying to figure things out. And Love that thing. removing the initial, the one that's mailed to him, removes the reason you came, which removes you preventing him from getting it. And that collapses whatever's holding all of this together. And there, there's no outcome that you can see. Mm. But removing it from his hands means they can't do another back, because they don't have time travel capability. Mm. So if we just destroy them, that's it, right? No. We just need to make sure that no one can ever use them again. I take both uh, both devices and fade out of existence. <coughs> he tries to. I grab him from. I don't trust you. I don't know. I don't know. I'm fading out of existence whether you want me to do it or not. You have to take the devices first. I have one. He has the other. I grab the one from you. Okay, so they're doing this. Is anyone else going to say anything? What you just said kind of just computed in my head yeah. for me. And I sort of look at him, and like we can sort of tell that we're thinking the same thing. So I'm actually handing him this device, and then if he's looking like he's about to react, I'm actually going to try to probably step in front of him. Okay. 
So why are you doing this? Because we're trying to end the cycle. If How he fades this... out with both these devices, that means that they can't be used. Until he fades back in. That's a conscious choice on my part. I'm going to make sure that no one... That these devices never bother us again. That Amazon never uses these for their own ends. Where are you going to take the devices? To a place no one can reach. Where is that? Outside of time. Outside of time? You don't understand. Time moves differently for me. Who are you, Victor? Don't worry, John. Your future will be safe. And it will be without Amazon. Or Andy's. I need, my Omega aspect is to ensure a linear timeline. I just want it up unless the time machines are gone. Exactly. Mm. I think Goddard's onto something, John. We should let him do it. If the time machines are gone, that will prevent Amazon and the, fut- and the war in the future. Right? Right. Of course, I could also go with him. I could go with you, right? I could grab on <coughs> you, while you while you fade out and then nuke, nuke us both. If you want to take him with you. Yeah, sure. I need to protect the timeline. All right. That's my penance <laughs> for all the death and destruction I've caused. You know that there's a cost to this. And the cost is that his memories get jumbled when he jumps with you. That's fine. Because you've seen it happen before. That's how he got here. There's no other time travel device. You had to get him Oh. Somewhere. That's how John got to our time. Was by, by what? jumping with him. Right. Really? Which is why his memories are so badly mangled. All right, John, but you won't like what happens. This is the first time this ever happens. Okay. You two roll temporal consequences. Oh, boy. The obstacle in this one is... is, is oh, it's a oh, it's a oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Negative four. I'm at two. Really? Mm-hmm. It did not matter what I said this obstacle at. This is great. It's great. <laughs> All right, so you, you grab the devices. Massive flux. Massive temporal flux. World kind of pulls away, disappears. Everything is is reorganizing itself, lining itself back up. From your perspective, the two of you outside of outside of time, you can kind of see what's happening. You know that the proper world lines are not being realigned, but they're being set. So that point was left. Everything changed before it stuck. Because this is not the original time travel device, this is this one. And then things just disappear. Everything kind of restructures and you can see the timeline. So does the future war happen? No. Okay. You two find yourselves in an office building. Your temporal consequences, because with that number of shifts, you would end up taking two temporal consequences. Ooh. Each of you. Mm. And you both already have one, correct? I've got one, yeah. Yeah, I had eternal headache. Uh, So that's three. Which means that you are removed and reintegrated into the time stream. We basically fade out like Marty. One thing though, if you want to trigger this, you do re-roll. Uh, well, that at least puts me at a four. I could get it up to a six if that would help. It would. Okay. Yeah. Then I will go ahead and spin this. That will make a huge difference for you. Hold on, I've got this. All right. So you take one more temporal consequence. Okay. And it's alternate timelines. You remember everything. Twice. Ugh. Occasionally, whenever you're using your abilities, you get this splitting headache. Because you're having to deal with two sets from everybody that they don't realize they well, have. Well, I have an eternal headache already, so... Yeah. Well, that, that's what that is. Mm. Yeah. It triggers whenever you're doing the other. Gotcha. Um, Does a nosebleed come with it? Only if you're really, really trying. Oh, good. So, you are conducting an interview. Officially. Mm-hmm. In this room, at this organization, you have Ed Cameron, who is the lead physicist under uh, a fusion scientist by the name of James Worrell. Worrell remembers, barely, what you guys came to talk to him about. So he recognizes you. You are older now, because it's been a few years. You didn't go back. You've had to hide for the last few years. Would I have been able to send myself my notes? The alternate me? You could. That's what I would intend to do. Let's do it this way. I will set up with a lawyer all of the information, the complete story. Unless I call him monthly, he will send it to the other me. Got it. And I have consistently called him. Okay. So nothing has happened, but if I should die, 
I'm going to get that package of information. The other me will. It is now February 15th of 2017. It is the information agent. The only other person who knows what you've said, who, who knows what happened, and a person who should but only has vague glimpses of it. And from here, with their testimony, you should be able to write a convincing story. Okay. The two of you are... Well, I'm the time thing. Lost in time. Well, no, I'm not lost Victor, in time. I am worry. time. <coughs> yeah. Victor, don't worry. <laughs> we'll be together forever protecting the devices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I'll keep you company, Victor. Don't worry. I push him into the time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where you find yourself. Okay. Amazon disappears. There is no more mention of it. No shadow organizations, no companies. They're just gone. Almost as if they never existed. Well, that's good. That's what we were shooting yep. for. So. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to write that story. Yeah. But it's there. Okay. It's picked up by the... Uh... The, the, do you the, roll the daily see? midnight star. Do you, do you want to roll to see how well it does? Yeah, I want to roll. Roll it. Roll it. Let's okay. see what do you got. Right. Destined to reveal the truth, but I can't spend anything. I have nothing to spend. Roll report. I uh, compel paper chase. Nice. Or pressure reporter, I guess. Because I mean, I get the plus two. I compel. You get the fake point. You get the fake. I get the fake. Then, which he can then spend on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I have a plus two, but not two plus two. Right. All right. Eight. Eight total. Yeah, it does extremely well. After getting over the initial, ha, <laughs> yeah, right, um, you were actually able to dredge up a few of his memories, aided by your mm-hmm, telepathic abilities. Since you can see those alternate timelines, he remembers. And between the three of you, you are able to convince everyone of what happened, of why the world is as advanced as it is. Of course, it's not me that does the convincing. <laughs> the other me. Well, no, this is at 2017, after the other me had left. After he left? Yes. Oh. You were, you were, you you were replaced. I take over his life. Yeah. You are now... Only you're older. I know. Now, like, Three years old. Yeah. You age poorly. Four years older, a little bit grayer, and uh, it, it shows. You just step into his empty shoes. Just my girlfriend on me. You've had four years to get over, man. Oh, yeah, it's a good point. So, yeah, you convince the world. Backwardcompatible.com. The game master for River of Time is Will Parsons, running Atomic Robo the RPG by Evil Hat Productions. Ed Cameron is played by Chris Krueger. Victor Goddard is played by Brian McKittrick. Bernard Hutton is played by Adam Doc Bracken. And John Titer is played by Jim Weaver. Your producer is Chris Krueger. For the Backward Compatible crew, thank you for listening. <laughs>